The Oracle Arena in Oakland is home to one of the finest organizations in American sports, the Golden State Warriors. On pace for a record-setting NBA season, most nights, the Warriors are the must-see attraction at Oracle. But tonight, another American sports star takes center stage in the 19,000-seat arena, Olympic gold medalist and undefeated boxer Andre Ward. Raised in the Bay Area, Ward began boxing at 10 years old and hasn't lost a boxing match since the age of 12. Ward remains the last male American boxer to claim a gold medal, a feat he achieved in Athens in 2004. Turning pro that year, Ward racked up win after win and in 2009 was cast into the Super 6 World Boxing Classic. The underdog managed to clean out the 168-pound division and won the tournament against dangerous Carl Frotch in 2011. As he continued his rise up the pound-for-pound -pound rankings, Ward found himself in against light heavyweight champion Bad Chad Dawson. Many ringside experts proclaimed the fight too close to predict, but Ward's domination was evident from the beginning. Ward just rocked Dawson again with another left hook, and Dawson's legs are gone. And by round 10, it was Dawson who said to the ref, it's over, I'm finished. Since that time, the Oakland star has been plagued by injuries and legal promotional disputes that led to long stretches of inactivity. But tonight, the former Olympian returns to a hero's welcome with a chance to reaffirm his place among boxing's pound-for-pound -pound stars. Standing in his way, undefeated Cuban boxer Sullivan Barrera, training out of the now highly touted Summit Gym in Big Bear, California. Tonight, the return of one of boxing's top talents, aiming to begin a new chapter in the light heavyweight division. Andre Ward versus Sullivan Barrera is next. California for tonight's edition of World Championship Boxing. The Oracle Arena, primarily known as the home of the World Champion Golden State Warriors, tonight will host the return of former 168-pound World Champion Andre Ward. Tonight in first, Ward's first scheduled pro bout at light heavyweight, he takes on little-known 34-year-old Sullivan Barrera. After years excelling within the Cuban amateur program, Barrera turned pro at 27 years of age and has fought as a light heavyweight or above for each of his 17 professional fights. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley. Welcome to this special edition of HBO's World Championship Boxing, on which the primary attraction, the main event, features Andre Ward's first appearance as a full-fledged light heavyweight at 175 pounds against much lesser-known challenger Sullivan Barrera. If Ward is able to succeed at this weight level tonight, it begins what is expected to be a path toward a showdown with light heavyweight title holder Sergei Kovalev, perhaps as early as this fall. It all depends on how Ward does in this, his first appearance at the 175-pound limit. But before we see that, a featherweight fight between rising American Joseph Diaz. He was a member of the 2012 United States Olympic team. He's from El Monte, California. He'll be taking on Jason Velez, a long-armed Puerto Rican who has appeared on HBO a couple of times before, but is still looking for his first win on these airwaves. There's Diaz, as it shows you there in the graphic, a member of the 2012 Olympic team, unbeaten so far as a professional. He's a southpaw. Velez, across the ring from him, fights out of the conventional stance, has a height and reach advantage, and has the incentive of not having previously won on his two appearances on HBO. And let's take a look at the tail of the tape for these two featherweights. You see the five-year age advantage, if in fact it's an advantage, for young Diaz. But he gives up three and a half inches in height. He gives up two inches in arm length measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. He weighed in three-quarters of a pound under Velez yesterday, although both unofficially tonight have rehydrated up to 139 pounds, so they're even in weight unofficially going into the ring. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and a holiday weekend welcome from 
the Oracle Arena here in Oakland, California, USA, where tonight, Rock Nation Sports is proud to present, live on HBO, world-class professional boxing for your entertainment, and it's sponsored by Corona Extra, La Cerveza Más Fina, Ticketmaster, where you watch the fight matters, get scanned, not scammed, and get in guaranteed every time with Ticketmaster verified tickets. CTMS corporate travel made simple. Glad, be happy, it's glad. Lyft, get a ride in minutes with Lyft, download and go. Zappos, powered by service. Body Armor Natural Sports Drink, switch to the number one natural sports drink available at Safeway, Target, and Chevron stores. Sand Nutrition, Sand, your fight, our fuel. And Shoe Palace, the ultimate experience. All the fights tonight are sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission. This first bout is promoted by Golden Boy Promotions in association with Miguel Cotto Promotions. At ringside, the three judges scoring will be Kermit Bayless, Mike Tate, and Marshall Walker. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Ed Coyantes. And now let's get this party started. 10 rounds of boxing for the NABF Featherweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white with blue and yellow. Official weight, 125, one half pounds. His professional record, an excellent one, consisting of 23 victories, including 16 wins by knockout, only one defeat with one draw. From Juncos, Puerto Rico, the challenger, Jason La Maravilla Ville. And fighting out of the black corner, wearing white with gray, officially weighing in at 125, three quarter pounds. His professional record, a perfect one. 19 fights, 19 victories, including 11 wins by knockout. Fighting out of South El Monte, California, USA, the undefeated NABF featherweight champion, Joseph Jojo. Diaz Jr. <laughs> Jason, Jojo, gentlemen, you received your instructions in the dressing room. I want you to obey my commands at all times and protect you at all times. This is for the NABF featherweight title. Gentlemen, good luck. Thank you. And we're joined now at ringside by world championship boxing expert Roy Jones and HBO boxing analyst Max Gellerman. As you mentioned earlier, Jason Velez, Jim, uh, was a prospect who seems to hit a bit of a wall when he took that next step up in class. He said he's rededicated himself. Joseph Diaz Jr. is the real prospect that people have their eye on now in this fight. He's taking a step up. And uh, anytime you have a good, fast, skillful, Mexican-American prospect in boxing because of the built-in fan base. People watch. People have their eyes on this kid. In November 2014, Velez appeared on a Terrence Crawford undercard in Omaha, Nebraska. Took the early lead in the fight against Evgeny Gradovich, and then Gradovich ground him up a little bit down the stretch of that fight. It wound up being called a draw. Then last November, on the undercard of Canelo versus Cotto in Las Vegas, Jason Velez took on former American amateur star, amateur star Ronnie Rios. Uh, once again, Velez was seemingly the leader early in the fight, but down the stretch, Rios hammered him, particularly to the body, and wound up winning a split decision. So Jason Velez is one draw, one loss in his two previous appearances on HBO, and Diaz is the favorite in the fight tonight. Not that bad for Velez because he didn't get any easy pickings for his first two fights on HBO. So, I mean, that's not really a bad record. I mean, he came up against Gradovich. You know how busy Gradovich is. And Ronnie Rios being the guy that he is, you expected him maybe to not to get, get the best outing in that fight. So, I mean, he has a great uh, career going for him. 
He's a great opponent for these guys trying to step up, and maybe one day he can make that move and step up. Velez has found it difficult to gain a comfort level with a trainer. He was trained by Abel Sanchez when we saw him in Omaha against Gradovich. He had another trainer when we saw him last fall against Ronnie Rios. He has another trainer now. Once again, he says that his current trainer uh, is the right guy for him, a trainer named Cheche Sanchez, who's local in Puerto Rico, where Velez lives and prefers to train. And a guy like Velez, he needs somebody who can give him all of their attention. It's kind of difficult for a guy that is not at the top echelon of the fighters, of amateur fighters, you may as well say, to take a guy whose time is distributed in so many different places and make him a really great fighter. Good left hand to the body by Joseph Diaz. And as Velez dropped his hands, he looped a right hand over the top to hit him as well. Yeah, you, you said it with that shot to the body, Jim. He's a... Uh, Diaz Jr. is a versatile fighter. You can see it. He gets the right distance. He can pressure. He doesn't stick around to get hit back. He can fight. And Velez knows this because he said they sparred together once. And he said this kid Diaz is really, really fast. Well, Diaz is now the property of Golden Boy Promotions. And Golden Boy told us that it was after having seen him in the gym that Jorge Linares, one of the most gifted fighters on the planet, said to them, you really need to sign this guy Diaz. He's as good a fighter as I've seen at his level. And if it, it comes from Linares, it's a compliment coming from a true genius artiste of the sport. If Linares had stronger skin, which would hold up under punishment, he might have had a truly great career. Indeed. Oh, good, oh, good hard oh, right God. hand by Velez to punctuate the round. One, two. This is Joker. Did I win that round? Ah, you got a little cut in your eye. I got a cut in my eye? Yeah, just a little one. A little cut, man. Just a little, just a little one. A little Vaseline on it. Oh, yeah, it's just a baby cut. Listen, listen, Joseph. As soon as you put that, as soon as you put that stuff on him, Jojo. As soon as you put that on him right away, son, you gotta close it up. Don't let him set up, okay? You're getting it on him, and then you're letting him start on you. Do not let him start on you. Okay. You know what I mean? You gotta continually put that little bit of pressure on him like that. Make him feel uncomfortable where he, he has to do something, but he's off balance. Okay. You know what I mean? But if you I'm sure it's the first time that Diaz has probably been cut, Jim, but this one, two, this straight right hand right here at the end of the round caused a cut under Diaz's eye. Very good straight punch by Velez. That could happen when a right-hander fights a southpaw because the right hand can land on the right side of the southpaw's face in kind of the opposite direction and stretch the skin. They had to give Velez some confidence going back after that first round because I thought he was losing the first round pretty easily, but that straight right hand punctuated the round very good for him. According to the information we have, Joseph Diaz has been cut twice before, uh, once on the, against a fighter named Jose Peranza, later against Ronnie Beblik. But in both cases, it was the left side of the face, the left eye, where he sustained the cut. So this is the first time that he's had a cut on the right side of his face. Keep him up, Jojo. And they are exchanging some really good oh, shots, Jim. Up, and that's because he laid back on that back foot too long, yep. getting away from that jab, the, and, and the right hand was behind it, catching him on the right side of the face. Stop! Let him off. Step back. Let's go. Round two of the schedule 10. One thing to Diaz on the right side in the white, uh, white trunks with brown trim and Velez in the white with blue and gold. It's one thing to be cut against a fighter you know you're going to beat. A fighter who's not on your level. It's another thing to be cut in a in a debut, a televised debut on HBO against a guy who's been in there with world class opposition. All part of the learning process. Yes, it is. And a guy who's been in there with, with you before, although he's in the gym, he still knows you a little bit. Gives him a bit of an advantage. Keep him up, keep him up. Harder to surprise him. Good overhand left by Diaz Jr. Yeah. Good work oh, under and then over with that left hand by Diaz. And now a good solid right hook and a straight left hand lands 
And another hard left. And Diaz has suddenly got the drop on Velez here in the second round. And it's a really big shot from Velez. He is really next level fast with his hands. And he is. And he's skillful with them. Oh, strike left hand right down the pipe. Landed for Diaz. Oh, God. And another hard shot with the left. He's got Velez in trouble with 30 seconds to go in round number two. Stop the back, He's not the using back. his speed to shoe shine here. They're one at a time, but they are precise. Uppercut, perfectly thrown by Joseph Diaz. Go, He's go, showing you go. a lot of the skills in his toolbox. A whole lot of them. And you got to give Velez credit. He's not backing down. Good overhand right by Velez. second round after sustaining the cut at the end of round one by Joseph on Diaz. Side over here. You're good. Listen, you see? I my head open. If you're on okay. the inside, you have to use more of that uppercut, right? Behind, Jason. Relax. You know, but it's not like something exaggerated, right? The problem is, yeah, please see Velez is a tough guy. He get caught, gets caught by an overhand left right there on the ear. And then Diaz Jr. slipped the overhand or slipped the left hook coming behind it, which was a great job. Once again, he gets close to Velez. Boom, with the same overhand left again. And he slipped the overhand right, right behind it. Beautiful offense turned into defense by Diaz Jr. Jason Velez's trainer tonight, Cheche Sanchez, uh, had a terrific experience training a tremendous world champion fighter named Yvonne Calderon. Lee Calderon functioned mostly as a flyweight, 112 pounds. Uh, and Calderon was a fighter who was brilliant at making himself scarce in the ring, hard to find sometimes. Velez is not as hard to find. Fights in a different style, so it'll be interesting to see what the trainer, Che Che Sanchez, will be able to do with him as this experience goes forward. They just come through a, or came through a very tough round in round number two as Joseph Diaz was on target with a lot of combination shots. Yeah, he put out a lot of punches that round, Jim. We have to see how he bounces back after that. Uh, when a guy puts out that much, usually, it takes a little bit out of him, and now is the time that you tell what kind of condition he's really in. The trainer can do so much. Uh, you know, it depends on the raw material he's working with. Diaz is so fast that Velez is going to have to rely on timing to offset the speed, but Diaz also has good timing. And yeah, he does, but Velez also has good power with those speedy shots. I said 112. Calderon turns out one titles at 105 and 108, so he was even smaller than the flyweight Chocolatito Gonzalez, who's the world pound for pound number one on many lists right now. Body shots by Diaz, well thrown. Velez is putting up a good doggone fight here too, Jim. He's not backing down and he has taken some real punishment. But his punches have not lost speed nor velocity on this. Well, against both Rios and Gradovich, Velez shows that he's a gutty competitor. It just seems to get hit too much at key moments in the fight. Oh, good shot by Velez. Yep. Nothing upsets me more, Jim, than to get hit by the same punch repeatedly. And he's getting caught by the same overhand left repeatedly. That angers me more than anything else in boxing. How fun is Diaz Jr. to watch, by the way? I mean, you know, usually when you see that kind of fast, twitchy American Olympian speed, um, especially when the guy doesn't have one-punch power, he can crack, but he's not a one-punch guy, Diaz. It's rare to see them apply their skill this aggressively and their speed this aggressively. Even right. if he plays defense, he's still coming forward. Exactly. Very good counter puncher, too. Tom Pubox counting the landed punches, and you see that the margin is piling up for the busier Joseph Diaz. A little bit busier and a lot more accurate. Like that. Good Once count. again, that same great left hand with which he's been painting Velez for the last couple of rounds. Painting is the word. And he paints him with it again. Ah. 
With April 9 only a few weeks away, our Pacquiao Bradley programming begins tonight following boxing. Stay tuned for Legacy on the Line. From Bradley to Pacquiao, it's an intimate look at Tim Bradley showing what he's gone through in facing Manny Pacquiao twice before. One week later, Under the Lights brings you analysis of the upcoming Pacquiao-Bradley rubber match with HBO's boxing experts along with Pacquiao's trainer, Freddie Roach. Then April 9, it's the third fight between Manny Pacquiao and Timothy Bradley, only on HBO pay-per-view. Don't miss it. At the right eye, is it's bad, eh? Got to pressure him. Okay, good. So apparently there's some some concern in Belez's corner about his right eye. We'll watch that as the fight continues. Meanwhile, unofficial scorer Harold Letterman here at ringside with us. How do you have it through three, Harold? Okay, Jim. I got a three to nothing, thirty to twenty-seven. Jojo Diaz Jr. Hey Jim, did you hear the uh, the dermatology I learned from Max Kellerman in round one? I must repeat this: a right to the right side of the face stretches the skin yeah. and causes a cut. Now if that's not beautiful, hey, stop, I don't know. Back, guys. <laughs> maybe he stretched the skin and maybe he didn't, but Diaz did get a cut. Orthodox and, versus Southpaw, Harold. Yeah. Right. But anyway, that was beautiful, Max. Anyway. Uh, Joseph Diaz landed that straight left constantly. Sort of reminds me of Manny Pacquiao, though. He gets that oh, left okay, and right down a pike. Three to nothing, Joseph Diaz Jr. Well, at least Velez blocked it that time. What I like about Diaz is that sometimes he lands it straight, sometimes he lands it loopy. And you just know from watching him that if, in fact, Velez learns his lesson and begins to block that left hand guys, up there, high, Diaz is going to drop it down and throw it to the body. Or change it to an uppercut. Oh, boom. Hits him with the straight left again. And Velez stumbled at the end of the last round. I don't know if that was from the accumulation of all the left hands or not. Oh, good right hand. Hard right hand by Velez. Momentarily wobbled Diaz. This is something Diaz is going to have to learn to deal with. He has a tendency to pull back from punches, and he's usually the shorter guy. So the, the, his opponent will have a longer reach, particularly world-class opponents can catch him on the end of straight punches. Saw the measurement on the tail of the tape. Showed you that Velez is two inches longer from the armpit to the end of the fist than is Diaz. Good right hand. Velez lands another right hand down the pipe. Right hand followed by a jab. Returning to the ring, and there's a big hug for Michael B. Jordan. Jordan, of course, movie star from here in the Bay Area. Max Kellerman and I had the thrill of working with him on the outstanding movie Creed. And there is Sullivan Barrera, formerly from Cuba, has lived in the United States for the past seven years, only 17 professional fights so far, styles himself a puncher which is a style that doesn't always work very well against Andre Ward for reasons Roy Jones will explain to you between fights. Diaz getting in swell pressure around the right eye from Ben Lira. Showing some damage from exchanges early in the fight. Marks also on the pace of Jason Velez. It has been a 
sharp, physical fight. Both fighters landing straight punches with authority. Diaz landing more of them, and that's why he's won every round so far on the card of our unofficial scorer, Harold Letterman. As Diaz keeps this up, he goes from, you know, prospect to rising okay, star. Um, this is a fan-friendly style with skill and speed and enough risk-taking and vulnerability to make for exciting fights. And Velez is a relatively tall featherweight, so Diaz won't be at this kind of height and reach disadvantage in all of his fights at 126 pounds, just some of them. There's just a few of them. Um, that 126-pound class is very loaded, though. You know, right now, the king of that class, I think, is Lo Vasil Lomachenko. Yep. And that is a tough place to be, so... Yeah, I mean, you wait for him to move us. Yeah, well, Machinko may be moving to 130 to fight Nicholas Walters, and the question as to whether he'll come back down, given that he fought uh, all the way up to 132 in the Olympics. But right now, he's on 26, and uh, Walters, of course, has appeared at 126, and there are a lot of others as well. Leo Santa Cruz, yes. unbeaten 126-pound fighter, who recently threw nearly 600 punches in five rounds. <laughs> against Kiko Martinez. Melez has okay, some stop. heart. He has a Mexican-American fighter. How, how often have we heard in the past where various Spanish-speaking fighters had to learn English to cross over? He's a Mexican-American fighter who doesn't speak Spanish, is trying to learn Spanish to cross over. fights. War in the crowd is likely for the arrival of Michael B. Jordan in the arena. The fighters probably think it's for them <laughs> as they deliver action in the center of the ring. Well, it's not because they're not giving us enough action because they are. Now, Velez is fighting even harder now. Well, Velez is having his moments here and there, but so far the story has been Diaz's speed advantage. His speed advantage and his skill advantage. He's very good at countering right, with that back, speed, like back, you said, Max. So he's a very sharp yes. counterpuncher. Harold Letterman just let me know it's Steph Curry in the house. Ah. That would be a bigger roar even than Michael B. Jordan. As, as, as great as Jordan is, Steph Curry is at a higher level right at this moment. Who's, who's at a higher level than Steph right now? Nobody. He's coming down. Got that round. You got the round. Can't wait. You got to throw more punches. Don't let him. Don't, don't let him steal the round. Don't let him steal the fight. Good. Good. He's dwindling now. He's dwindling. He's got no air left. And there's Steph Curry, who, as we mentioned, entered the arena during that last round. Sergey Kovalev is seated right behind Steph Curry. Curry is the object of everyone's affection here in the Bay Area. And around the, the world. star in the room. Choosing to watch this live instead of the second half of the final eight basketball game between Kansas and Villanova. Take that, basketball. All right, stop. Step back. Step back. That's a real no boxing punches. fan. If you weren't on the air, I'd tweet that right now, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, we still have a wonderful fight going on in front of us. A really good fight. Two good body shots right there yeah. by both fighters. You know, I mentioned Leo Santa Cruz during the last round. He's been on the Gaddy list on the fight game several times. 
Joseph Diaz may be headed for a Gaddy list appearance. I'll tell you something else. Jason Velez is showing a lot of heart right now. Not just because he's taking punches, but because he's taking punches and sticking to his game plan. In the face of a faster, more skillful fighter, he's still doing what he's what he set out to do or trying to do what he came in to do. And giving it his all at trying to do it. Yeah, Velez may be developing a little bit of a hard luck career here. We've mentioned his two previous appearances on HBO. A draw against Radovich, a loss to Ronnie Rios. He's fighting even better tonight than in either of those two previous appearances, but he's in against a guy who is red hot at this moment. A guy that may be a little bit sharper Stop, than either back. of those Look previous two. Well, at, a, at a certain point, at a certain level, you're going to have to notch some wins. But in the meantime, if you stay competitive against world-class fighters, you'll get more chances. And he's definitely competitive. He has punching with real authority tonight. Oh, good body shot by Diaz. Particularly with the left hand. Like that. Do you wonder why Belez hasn't yet figured out how to read the left hand and see it coming? Uh, no, I just think he doesn't care. I don't think it has caused him any real harm yet. And because of that, he's not really concerned. It's also he's coming in pretty quick. Sticking. Yeah, it is coming pretty quick, but at some point, if it hurts, he's trying to defend it. Blocked it twice right there, but... Okay, stop. Step back. Let him out. Let him out. Step. No punches. No punches. One of the things about speed, it's not just of the body, but of the mind. Watch your heads, guys. It seems Watch your to heads. me that Diaz's brain works a little quicker in there, Roy. It does. His fast twitch muscles. muscles. Oh, good right hand by Velez. His fast twitch muscles and his brain works a little quicker. Yeah. By the time Velez is thinking about maybe defending that left okay, hand, no it's too punches. late. Stop. Break. Step back. Step back. Step back. Let's go. <laughs> And here we see Diaz all night long landing his left hand from different spots. He lands overhand left right there in close. Overhand left right here from the outside. Slips the right hand. Undershot like an angle punch left from the inside. Overhand left behind the jab, which is what I call a pause right there. Overhand left behind the left, the right body shot, which is a beautiful shot. It's just so many different ways he's landed that left hand and continuously landed that left hand throughout the night. Every combination leads to the overhand left. Every single one. And Lira's done a good job controlling the cut under Diaz's right eye. Caught that cut right at the end of round one. On a right-hand punch from Jason Velez. Harold, how do you have it through six? <laughs> Look at him. I got it six to nothing. Uh, 60 to 54, Jojo Diaz Jr. You know, Jim, I tell you, not only does he have a great left hand over the top, and it's a hard left hand. I mean, those are knockout punches, but he's got a terrific right hook to the body. Every so often, you know, you, where Velez is looking for that left hand over the top, Joseph Diaz hits him with that terrific right hook. So he's beat them both boys. He's beat them to the head, beat them to the body. We just saw a right hook that landed to the body. Six to nothing, Jojo Diaz Jr. Body shots set up those head shots. They sure do. And that Belez is one tough character because he's taking the body shots. He keeps coming. He's taking the head shots. He keeps coming. He doesn't care what happens. He continues to come and press on. Puerto Rican against a Mexican-American. Does that have a little bit of that rivalry <laughs> taste in it? I guess it does. Because you would think that he's been outclassed, outsped, outpowered here tonight, but it doesn't look like it. Like Nonito Donaire before him, Joseph Diaz became a boxer after having been bullied in elementary school. He felt as though he was the small kid who was getting beaten up by larger guys. And he decided that he would, or his father actually said, you should go to a boxing gym and took him to the gym. And his father has become his trainer without previous experience as a boxing trainer. Reminiscent of what Enzo Galzaki did with his jo son Joe years ago. It's an unusual path, but we've seen it work before. Right now he's a little bit windy. 
trying to catch his second win, and Velez is really coming on this round trying to steal it because he knows that uh, Diaz Jr. is trying to catch a second win here. It's quite a way to catch a second win, win though, because he's winging those hard body oh, shots while he's doing it. Oh, good right hand by Velez. Oh, good body. Right hand to the body by Diaz. That would hurt pretty yep. bad. Letterman talked about that right hook to the body. That was a perfect example right there, and there's the left hand that follows behind it. And for the first time, you saw some give in Velez after that hook to the body. Yeah, it took a lot of steam out of Velez. Again. Stop! Step back. Let's go. Step back. Let him up. Step back. He was doing good up until that point of this round, and that kind of stole the round and swung it back towards Diaz's favor. <laughs> Discipline with those body shots. Another solid left hand down the pipe. Jason Velez simply hasn't found a way to defend against that overhand left. Still to come, Sullivan Barrera, conventional fighter. Right hand punch is the big weapon for him. Describes himself as a puncher. Says he'll be looking to do damage against Andre Ward tonight. Meanwhile, unbeaten Andre Ward. Now entertaining his Virgil Hunter trained stablemate, Amir Khan. Khan, of course, with a huge assignment coming up May 7th against Canelo Alvarez in Las Vegas. And yesterday, in discussing that, Andre Ward was quite adamant in saying to us, don't count Khan out. He's got a great chance against Canelo Alvarez. Joseph Diaz gathering breath and has been tremendously energetic through the first seven rounds and has won all seven of them on Harold Letterman's unofficial scorecard to gain a commanding advantage against Jason Velez, at least unofficially, as we come to round eight of a scheduled ten. And I think he broke the, uh, Velez at the end of that last round, Jim. When he was starting to attack, Velez just kind of turned and walked away as to say, well, I know if he comes right now, I can't stop him, so... Good overhand right. I mean, no. Neither fighter is seen to have great power, but if there's been a power advantage in the fight, it has definitely belonged to Diaz, who's landed more solid shots, who has bedeviled Velez upstairs with the, the overhand left, straight left hand, right, stop, uh, and Don't has also, as we back, mentioned, landed back. some authoritative shots to the body. Velez delivered a cut with the right hand punch in round number one and has landed some good right hands the rest of the way. But nothing Velez has landed has sizzled with the same authority as those punches that Diaz has been winning rounds with since the beginning of the fight. has had a good fight in front of him and has done nothing to interfere with it. Staying out of the way, making himself scarce in the ring, delivering the kind of referee effort we love to see. And I can't say that uh, Diaz Jr. is not really a power puncher or a good power puncher because he's throwing punches and hitting Velez with punches that I think will take a lot of guys out just that Velez seems to have a... Iron's uh, uh, chin. His chin seems to be one of those that you can't crack right away. So, only 11 knockouts and 19 fights okay, for Diaz. Punch out, guys. Boxer puncher type. No question, he punches with authority. Now it seems that he has a cut out, over his eye. Yep. Stop! Right step eye. back! Step back! That eye is. There's, there's blood all around the eye. Talking about Diaz? Yes. yes. So the right eye. Yes. Get 
Okay, stop, 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 stop. Check back, check back, step back, let's go. Is that over? Yep, it, look, that's not just blood from under the eye. That looks like a cut over the side of the right eyelid. That's probably Well, it'll be two rounds to go as we get to the end of the eighth. So we'll watch as Diaz goes to his ah! corner, and Ben Lira will step in as the cut man. Let's see what he can do. Jason Velez trying to energize himself as he sits down with Cheche Sanchez. Copy box numbers show you the advantages so far for Diaz, throwing fewer, landing more, and landing at an extraordinarily high overall percentage. 52% extremely accurate. Oh, what a spit. And there's the look. It. Drink it, drink it. Okay, into your nose. Out your mouth. Into your nose. Out your mouth. Into your nose and hold it. Hold it. Let out slow. There you go. Touch him. Don't let him get into it. That's why you get him. Don't let him start. Don't let him start. You just stay. A cut in the eye and a corner and in the corner of the eyelid. Outside corner. Kellerman has joined the most popular fan in the arena. Let's go to him. Steph, why come out and support Andre Ward tonight? He's a uh, Bay Area local, Oakland guy. Um, we got a lot of things in common off the, off the ring, off the court. So, um, especially, he was one of the guys when I first got drafted out here, I went to go see his fight, and that was kind of my introduction to the Bay Area. So, seven years later, still supporting him. Are you a fight fan? I am a casual, not not too, not too serious, but uh, kind of know what's going on and, and love the, the, the sport, head, entertainment, and uh, what these guys do in the ring. Do you guys uh, motivate each other? You guys have 34 straight home wins. He hasn't lost since he was 13 years old. Yeah, you 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 love greatness and inspired by that for sure. So, especially a guy that I know personally, um, and the amount of success he's had in the ring. Um, obviously, you want that to continue tonight, and what we do on the, on the basketball floor, we want to have that same kind of competitiveness and fire, so um, it's special. You're going to break the wins record this year? I hope so. That's what we're playing for. we got uh, 10 games left. Need to win eight of them, and then obviously, we get that done, and the big picture is, you know, bring another championship back to the Bay Area, so uh, we're on our way. Thanks, champ. Jim? Back to the action in round nine. Joseph Diaz against Jason Velez, very much like what we've seen before. Roy Jones, the cut is under the eye and at the corner of the eyelid. How troublesome for Diaz? Not troublesome at all, Jim, because it's at the corner. It's not leaking down into the eye. It's actually bleeding towards the outside corner of the eye. So it doesn't impair the vision at all. Good body shot by Velez. I'll tell you what, Belez has the heart of a champion. I can tell you that much. Most likely he'd need a knockout to win at this point. How should he pursue it? Well, just like he's doing, he's keeping the pressure up. He's trying to catch Belez, I mean, catch Diaz between his punches. Uh, he's doing the best thing that he possibly could do for himself right now. Draymond Green in the house, too. Have we mentioned that yet? I have not seen Draymond. Sitting a one person removed from Steph, maybe the best center in the world right now. Mm. Best point center. Point center. <laughs> Leads the league outside of point guard in assists. Perhaps still disappointed that his Michigan State Spartans unexpectedly bowed out in the first, oh, 10 minutes of the NCAA basketball tournament. There's Draymond. Every team's looking for a guy just like him now. They all want the center who can shoot the three and defend multiple positions. He's a boxing yeah. fan. I remember seeing him here when Andre Ward fought Chad Dawson here a few years back. The last round. Don't throw yourself in with that straight shot. All right? Give him more water. You got to attack more, right? 
Come on, let's go. We can do this. We came to fight. Forget about it. Let's go. Let's do it. And deep breaths. Deep breaths. And they throw a little hard one. You know what I mean? Max Kellerman, we saw a graphic during the last round while you were away that showed that Joseph Diaz, despite the marks on his face there, has landed 52% of his punches, all of his punches, not his power punches, but his entire assortment coming to this last round in the fight. 52% of all your punches is an extraordinarily high percentage. He's a super accurate puncher. He doesn't put like four and five punches together. Um, his punches are more deliberate, but they're almost all on target, head and body, both hands. Uh, the only thing I would say he's missing, if you're looking at, at, from a pure talent point of view, is one-punch power. He has good, sharp, stinging punches. He'll be able to score some knockouts, but it doesn't look like he's going to get guys out of there with one big shot. 11 knockouts and 19 wins coming in. But that's 19 and 0. Very good chance that it's going to get to 20 and 0. And once again, as an amateur, he was good enough to make the United States Olympic team. And when he lost in London, as has often been the case in recent years with American fighters, all of the coaches were very upset and publicly described it as a robbery loss. Let's go punch out, guys. Listen out. Another perfect combination. Three punch selection landing to the head. And what does Velez do? Punch right back behind him. He's a gutty fighter. <laughs> Jason Velez is trying as hard as he can. He just can't get away from the brilliant, accurate punching of Joseph Diaz. It's the hand speed, right, Jim. The hand speed will kill you every out, time. Anytime back, you got back. a guy that's that much quicker than his opponent, it's very difficult for the opponent to hit him and deal with defending that hand speed at the same time. than a minute to go and what has been a pretty brilliant display go, stop, multiple back, skills back. by American prospect Joseph Diaz from the South El Monte gym in El Monte California When he first started to train in the gym, first began sparring, throwing punches, he was soft. A marshmallow by his own description. He's not a marshmallow anymore. A hard-edged fighter with excellent skills. He wasn't in against the cupcake tonight, but he outclassed him. He sure wasn't now. And he definitely highly outclassed him. Ah! A brilliant display by young Joseph Diaz. Here's some highlights, Roy Jones. Tell us what you're looking at. Well, that was a good... Overhand left fought by the right hook because he had landed the overhand left so much that the right hook became open. There he lands a straight left hand instead of an overhand left, followed by a left under uppercut, really. A right uppercut, really, I mean. Slips and throws a left right hook to the body, followed by overhand left. Wow, what a good body shot. I think that might have been the best body shot of the night for him. And all of that action was in the 10th round. Jason Velez is a classy competitor who no doubt knows that he was beaten in this fight. And uh, Harold Letterman, how did you score it? Okay, Jim, I got a 10 to nothing, 100 to 90, uh, Jojo Diaz. I tell you, Jason Velez 
got some heart, some jaw, takes a great punch, but Jojo Diaz just hit him too hard. I, I mean, the right hooks to the body, the straight left hands to the head, he just piled up points. You can't take it away from him. The kid was really terrific. I mean, you know, he's got heavy hands, Jim. Not a one-punch knockout fighter, but very, very heavy hands. I think he's going to go far in the featherweight division. And who are the three official judges who'll score the fight? Okay, you know, Jim. Uh, Kermit Bayless is the brother of uh, famous Las Vegas, Nevada referee Kenny Bayless. Uh, Kermit, as a judge, uh, worked Timothy Bradley's uh, win over Jesse Vargas, 115-113 uh, for Vargas. Uh, that's a little questionable, but generally he's a pretty good judge. Mike Tate and uh, Marshall Walker, both from San Francisco. All right, so trainer Cheche Sanchez takes the gloves off of Jason Velez, who put up a very spirited effort, but was more or less swamped by the punching accuracy of Joseph Diaz. And now Michael Buffer is ready to give us the official decision in the fight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Kermit Bayless scores the contest 191. Marshall Walker III scores at 99-91, and Mike Tate has it, 98-92. All three scores go to the winner by unanimous decision. Still undefeated, still the NABF featherweight champion, Jojo Diaz Jr. So it's a unanimous decision win for Young Diaz. And now we'll take a look at CompuBox numbers, which once again show Diaz landing 245 out of 658. That percentage has dropped significantly, so I believe what we saw earlier, 52% uh, must have been power punches only. And Velez landing 24%. And there we are, power punches. Joseph Diaz landing 220 out of 429, as opposed to 155 of 528, about 30% for Jason Velez. So Velez performed credibly, but Diaz was much better and earned the unanimous decision victory. Most likely, you'll be seeing him again.